Hello, my name is Dan Klingman with the Lincoln Electric Welding School. Today we're at Beaumont Scouting Reservation in Rock Creek, Ohio. We're going to go over the process of how to earn your welding merit badge utilizing the GMAW or gas metal arc welding process. In the GMAW process, we've got a solid wire with an external shielding gas of 75 argon, 25% CO2. No matter what the welding process, there's got to be a way to protect that molten puddle from the atmosphere. And in this case, we're going to use the argon CO2 mixture. Some processes utilize a flux, but some way there has to be to protect that molten puddle from the atmosphere. In MIG welding, the advantage is we've got a very clean weld. We don't have to worry about cleanup once we make the weld, but it's very important to start with base material that is clean. So if there's any scale, rust, oil, or grease, make sure you clean all that off um, to, to help assure a, a, a clean weld. Now, before we get ready to weld, we've got to make sure we've got our proper welding safety gear, which is going to include uh, auto darkening helmet. In this case, we've got a Viking helmet. We've got a welding beanie clear safety glasses, we've got a cotton jacket with leather sleeves, and we've also got some MIG and stick leather gloves to protect our hands. The other thing is you want to make sure you've got long pants on and then aren't tucked into your boots so that the sparks can't sit in there and go into your uh, uh, feet. Other part of safety for GMAW welding is going to be the uh, cylinder that we're going to have. So in this case we've got a 7525 argon CO2. It is compressed. So any time that you're transporting these bottles, be sure that you have your uh, cap on the bottle. And when you're ready to weld, make sure the bottle is secured to, uh, to a solid object with a strap uh, or something to prevent it from falling over. Also, depending on the environment that you're welding on, you want to make sure you've got the proper ventilation. So if you've got an open building with there's some air blowing through, or if you don't, in this case, we've got a mini flex fume extraction system that's going to help pull the fume away from us. And the key is to keep your head out of the plume as a general rule. The other thing is, for in a room that's open, you want to protect others that may be around you and looking at the arc and you may not be aware of it. So you may need some type of a weld screen in the background uh, to help prevent from that. Also, you got to be aware of your surroundings. In this case, we've got some wooden objects around us for this, like this workbench, for example. Be aware of where your welding sparks are going. We've got some signs here to remind us of that. Uh, so every 30 minutes or so, come back or after welding and check the area to make sure there's no smoldering fires. And those can also be downloaded off of Lincoln's website in a PDF form to be printed. As a backup or safety precaution, we've got a fire extinguisher. So again, before you get welding, make sure you cover your area, make sure there's no hazards around you, cables and things like that that may be uh, something to trip over if you got to get out in a hurry. Now, before we get ready to weld, we're going to go over the setup of our equipment. We've got the Lincoln SP140T power source wire feed welder. We've got the Magnum 100 welding gun. We've also got a regulator, gas hose, We've got our spool of L56 Lincoln wire, 025 in diameter, or 25 thousandths. Once we put the spool on, we need to be sure that the spool is feeding off the top. We then straighten out six inches of wire. We put on the plastic spacer, the wing nut with just a little bit of tension. We feed the wire through the ingoing guide across the 25 thousandths smooth drive roll and into the outgoing guide tube into the welding gun. Once we've done that, we can close the top idler roll and we'll set just a slight tension on that so that we can get good feedability of the wire. One of the important things about GMAW or MIG welding is the correct polarity. GMAW is ran on DC positive or electrode positive. So our short lead coming from our feeder is going to be attached to the positive stud. Our work lead that has our clamp on it is going to be attached to our negative output stud. Okay, before we start to weld, we want to make sure we get a good starting point for our procedures. If we take our material to be welded and we open up the door of the machine, there's a chart here that is to scale. If we look here, this is showing that we have approximately 10 gauge material and we're using 025 or 25 thousandths L56 with a 7525. So we come down this line to 10 gauge and it's showing us to start with a setting of 5 for the wire feed speed 
and E for the voltage setting. Now again, if you also, if you forget of how to set up the polarity of the machine, it is referenced up here for both doing GMAW and FCAW. So once we have our starting settings for our procedures, we come to the front of the machine and we're going to set our wire feed speed at 5 and our voltage on the tap control here to E. From there, we may have to adjust. If you have too much wire and not enough voltage, the wire will start to stub. So you can either do one of two things, either turn your wire feed speed down or turn your voltage up. So same as if, you're, if you don't have enough wire, you'll see the arc, it'll tend to glob across the arc. You can either take your voltage down or take your wire feed speed up. So for the setup of the GMAW, we talked about the addition of our gas bottle, the Harris regulator, and gas hose. And be sure that when you turn on the main valve with a cylinder, have the regulator backed out so that when you first crack it open, it doesn't have a big surge of, of gas. So back out your regulator. Then in order to set the cubic feet an hour, you're gonna pull the trigger on the gun with the machine on and dial it in. And we're setting it, I've got it at about 20 cubic feet an hour right now. With the small nozzle that we're working on and the small puddle, that's a great starting point for shielding gas. More is not better. Around 20 CFH is about all you need to start welding. The last part of our setup is gonna be our work lead. Our work lead, you wanna to try to put as close as possible as where you're, to where you're welding and make sure you put it on a clean surface so you get a good electrical connection there. Before we start on our first project with the GMAW process or MIG welding, there's a couple different techniques we can use. Uh, one of them is a push technique. When you push the electrode, you tend to get a much flatter weld but less penetration into your base material. If you drag the weld, you'll end up getting a convex weld or humped up but you do get a little bit more penetration due to the fact that you're on the leading edge of that puddle. So when it comes to GMAW, it's, you can do it either way, just be aware of the outcome of the weld uh, depending on which way you do it. So now we're gonna start. I like to have a pair of uh, wire cutters here just to start with a clean uh, tip. It helps start a little bit better. And our first project is gonna be, uh, we're gonna weld our initials. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take a soapstone and we're going to write our initials on the plate and then we're going to go ahead and weld those. And again, as we mentioned, make sure your base material is clean. So we're going to turn our welder on. We've got our welding procedure set and our fume extraction will come on when we start the arc. And we're going to go ahead and start welding. Now, we finished our first project, which was welding our initials on a small uh, plate. And you'll notice very little cleanup. All we did was hit it real quick with a wire brush, very little spatter. And you'll notice a little bit of uh, silicon islands on there. That comes from the wire. Uh, the wire has silicon added to it as a deoxidizer to help clean that weld pool. So any impurities are brought up to the surface of the weld in the form of those silicon islands. So the dirtier your material, the more silicon islands you'll have. And now we're ready to move on to the next project for our welding merit badge. And that's going to be, we're gonna build a pad. So we're gonna start at one side, we're gonna weld across, and then each weld will be stacked up next to each other, crossing over, overlapping approximately half the distance. So we'll get our keep on here. Trim our wire, we're ready to get a good start, and we're ready to weld. Oh. 
Okay, we've made our uh, first pass, and then we'll, we'll just slightly clean it, get off some of the silicon islands, and we'll continue to fill this plate all the way across until we, until we uh, complete the pad. So we continued all of our passes on our building our pad. Uh, we made one complete layer, and then we cleaned it all up, and you can see how they overlap about halfway. So that's your second project for your welding merit badge. The, the third project that we're gonna do is a, uh, it's gonna be a groove weld on a butt joint. There's typically five main types of joints. There's a butt, butt joint, T-joint, edge joint, corner, and lap. We're gonna do three of those joints today as part of our project. So the first one we're gonna do is our butt joint. We're gonna go ahead and put these together. It, it's, a, it's a square edge. We haven't done any prep to these plates and we're gonna put them right tight together. As you get thicker in plate thickness, you may have to put a gap in between them, but for, for this particular thickness, we're okay. We're gonna go ahead and tack them up. Once we got them tacked up, we're gonna go ahead and weld down the joint. Okay, we weld it on one side. We're gonna flip the plate over. We're gonna make the same weld. It's always a good idea to have a pair of pliers uh, to hold on to the material. It's going to be hot when you're done. But all we did was weld on one side, flip it over, and weld on the other side. We just finished up our butt weld. We got it all cleaned up. And you can see very little spatter was on there, uh, very little cleanup. That's one of the advantages, again, of GMAW welding. You'll also notice that when I was welding, I'm holding a very short electrical stick out, okay, which is the distance from the contact tip to the beginning of your arc. Very important in the GMAW process, especially in short arc transfer, to keep that nozzle pretty close. Quarter inch, five sixteenths uh, is very common. And again, you'll also see me sometimes trimming this wire. That's to, to make sure that we get a nice clean start on my next weld. So we finished up our, our, our square butt joint. Now we're gonna move to the T joint with a fillet weld. We're gonna take the two pieces. We've already trimmed our wire. We're going to tack the two plates together. One more. Once we have the plates tacked, we're going to then go ahead and make our weld down the joint. So we finished up our, our T-joint, and remember, the weld thickness does not have to be much more than the thickness of the material. The rule of thumb is typically three quarters times the thinnest member. So don't feel that more weld makes it stronger. It, it really doesn't. Now we're going to move to our last weld, which is going to be on a lap joint. We're going to take our two plates, and we're going to position them 
like this. So we still, we've got a lap joint, but we're gonna make a fillet weld in that joint. So we'll take our gun. Again, we'll trim our wire, make sure we get a nice start. Tack the two plates together, one tack at each end. Cover. Cover. Okay, now that we got our joint tacked together, we'll go ahead and make our weld. Again, holding the gun as close as we can. So we went ahead and completed our, our lap joint. And you'll also notice one thing that's important before we make any of these welds is try to get as comfortable as you can. If you've got a smooth edge on a table, use that as a rest to guide your hand. Don't try to you know, freehand it. Make sure you get comfortable and the outcome of your weld will be a lot better. So our final weld was our lap joint. And we took a wire brush, cleaned it up, and you can see, again, uh, not too big, not too small. And that concludes our final project for the Welding Merit Badge. So congratulations on taking a step toward earning your Welding Merit Badge. If you enjoyed welding today and you want more information on welding or careers in welding, you can visit lincolnelectric.com or for more information on the Boy Scouts, you can go to scouting.org. Mm -hmm.